Hi class, we are on to chapter 4.4. Today we're going to talk about laws of logarithms. Um, here we're going to really get into the rules that dictate um, logarithms and we're going to see how it relates to exponential functions. Um, we're going to use these rules to solve logarithmic equations. So we, we did a little bit of solving in the last section, um, but here we're going to have all the tools necessary to solve any of the logarithmic problems that we'll come across in this textbook. So <clears throat> one of the things that I like about rules of logarithms, they used to be very confusing to me. Um, and then once I noticed that the rules of logarithms are basically the same thing as the rules of exponents, it became really, really easy for me to use. So and to remember. So that's what we're going to try to do today is try to compare those um, two rules and see how they're related. Right. So, if I have log of b, m times n, it's very similar to when I have the same base being multiplied across different powers, right? What we do then is that we add those powers together. So, if I have log of b and inside of my function is m times n, I get to separate this into two different logarithms that are being added, okay? And again, this is analogous when I have b times m, or b to the m times b to the n. So again, you see how they're being multiplied. And when I combine these into a single base, they get added together. So it's really the same thing. I'm kind of doing the opposite. I'm not, instead of combining them to a single base like I would here, I'm separating it into two bases, but the rule is the same the multiplication turns into addition, right? So if on the inside is m times n, I expand that to an addition of two logarithms with the same base. Same thing here, when I have log base b of m over n, we'll just think about what we do when we have exponents, right? If I had base m, if I had b to the m over b to the n, I would subtract those two powers. So it's the same thing here. This would be extracted to a uh, subtraction problem, okay? So again, b to the m over b to the n, m over n, right, m over n, I subtract those two exponents. So I turn that into two logs, same base, and I subtract them. Log b, m to the p, this is one of the most important rules that we have. You're gonna use this rule particularly all the time. What that is, is the p gets to drop down to the outside and it turns into a scalar multiple, right? I get to multiply my logarithm times that previous exponent. So this is like when you have b to the m to the p, right? Notice m to the p, m to the p, m times to raise to the p. When I simplify this, it's just m times p. So here, the p comes outside and it multiplies. So again, number three is the most important rule for you to, to memorize. One and two will come, you've come across them, but three is the one you're gonna use a lot, okay? So this rule is very important. Okay, and we've seen before when we have b to the b, <clears throat> log base b with b on the inside, that this is just one, right? So this is sort of a review for these ones. Log base b with an input of one, we know that that is zero. And when we have a base raised to a log with the same base, that those two cancel out and you get just m. Okay. So those are very important. So let's do an example. So a lot of times we need to use one or two of these rules. Um, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna try to combine this uh, log expression into a single logarithm. In order to do that, notice that they all have to have the same base, right? They all have to have the same base base of 10, so we don't have to write 10, but we can use these rules to combine these together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is apply rule 3. 3 log a's is the same as log a cubed, right? Same thing here. We're just going to apply those, uh, I call it p log, right? The p log uh, rule. I'm going to take the exp, uh, the multiplier and I'm going to turn it into an exponent, right? So we would not just add these two all together. It would not just turn into two log, okay? That's not what happens here, right? So I want to be very clear. 
you don't just add these together. They're not th the same. You have an A here, a B here, and a C here. You can't just add them together, right? So we got to actually apply these rules. So this turns into log A cubed, log B squared, log C. If we wanted to, we could rewrite this as plus log B to the negative 2, because this is technically 3 log A plus a negative 2 log B. So we could do a little bit of finagling here and write this as plus log B to the negative 2. That would be fine as well um, if we wanted to. Okay. So notice that I have my positives. Remember when anything is positive, they multiply. Whenever I have something that's negative, it actually ends up being in a denominator position. So all the positive logs are in the numerator and the negative log is in the denominator. So let's think about what would have happened if I wrote plus log b to the negative 2 instead. Well, that still that negative 2 still would have dropped it to the bottom here. Okay. So if I had them all as pluses and I wrote them all in a line, that negative that b negative 2 still would have ended up in the denominator position. So that coincides with with the rules that we wanted. Okay. So sometimes we want to combine our logs into a single logarithm, sometimes we want to expand it, right? So we're going to expand this as much as we can. So we're doing the opposite of what we did in A here. Okay. So here I have something over something else. So the first rule that I want to apply is 2. I'm not going to pull the 3 out um, or the square root as a power. I'm not going to pull that out yet. I'm going to first try to separate them into separate logs and then I can apply this P log uh, rule number 3. So first I'm going to use rule 1 and 2. Really just rule 2. And I will uh, separate this into log t cubed, the numerator, minus log square root t squared plus 1, my denominator. Okay, It's on the bottom. It has to be subtracted. Right? From here, I can use my p log rule, right? rule 3. Okay, The powers turn into constant multipliers. So this will be 3 log t. Right? Remember, square roots are really uh, power 1 half. So I can pull this out as one half log, and then what was left on the inside, t squared plus one. Now from here, a lot of you might be saying, okay, there's one more step. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to turn this into two more logs because there's a plus sign here, and I can pull this two out later. You can't. Okay. Notice here, nowhere in the rules do you see a inside of the logarithm where there's a plus or a minus on the inside of the log and a rule that goes with that. It's only when you multiply or divide or have a power. Addition or subtraction happening inside of your logarithm, you're stuck. You can't do anything with that. So try not to make that mistake. It's a very common mistake that students make. But I cannot expand this any further than it is now. This is uh, its fully expanded form at this point. So again, I said this in the last video, but a lot of times when we're solving exponential equations, we have to take the log of both sides, right? Or we have to go from logarithmic form into exponential form, okay? But what we're going to do right now is something that we do a lot, right? Um, when we have an exponential equation, we can take the log of the left side and the log of the right side, basically putting those terms inside of a logarithm with the same base. And when you actually simplify this, form, you get your change of base formula. So let's say I had base b to the x equals y. And I take the log of both sides. So log b of x and log of y. Right? I literally just throw them both sides independently into a different logarithm with the, the same base. Right? Log, here I'm using a base of a. You have to, I'm being equal because I'm doing the same thing to both sides. So I'm, I'm maintaining that equality that's going on here. Right? Here, let's apply the rules of logarithms. I can pull this x out as a multiplier because of that p log rule, right? So x log base a of b is the same as log a of y. And if I'm trying to solve for x, it's very simple now. I just divide both sides by log uh, base a of b, okay? So x is equal to this thing. This leads to our change of base formula. Let's say I took this thing, and I put it in exponential form. It would be log base b of y equals x, right? Log base b of y equals x. Well, x is also equal to 
log base a of y over log base a of b, right? So if I put this into logarithmic form, the output that I get from that is the same as this. So I can equate those two sides together. So <clears throat> if I have, have a base that I don't like, like log base 12 or log base 1 half of y, I can figure out what this value is <clears throat> instead of having to go into exponential form like this and then taking log of both sides. I can just use the change of base formula um, where I'm using a log that I like, right? Like natural log or log of base 10. We like to use standard just log base 10 or natural log because our calculators can do that, right? So it makes uh, simplifying these things a lot easier when our calculators are readily available, right? So <clears throat> let's do a quick example. Let's say I have log base 3 of 16. I have no idea what this value is. My calculator, actually, most calculators will not give you this value. So what I can do is I can write into exponential form and take the log of both sides and do all of this work and come down here to this result. Or if I already know that um, these two things are equivalent, right, this x form here is the same as this, I can just go straight to the formula, right? So if I just use my change of base, so I can use base 10 because my calculator does base 10. So I'll just do log of y, so log of 16 over log of 3, right? My calculator does this, right? Its standard log is the log base 10. So I can actually plug this into my calculator and find an answer. Or if I'd rather natural log it, I can do natural log of 16 over natural log of 3. And that's the exact same thing as log base 3 of 16. But now I can actually solve for that answer by using my calculator.